GM introduced its all-new full-size lineup in 1971, and for Oldsmobile, this meant its Delta 88 and 98 were significantly changed over the previous 1965 to 70 full-size generation. These new full-sizers for 71 became much more organic in form with rounded side sections, faster backlights, and wraparound windshields. And of course, they were a few inches longer than their predecessors as well. As usual, Olds' range-topping sedan was the 98, which came in both base and up-level LS trims. The latter had a pretty snazzy clock in the middle of the rear seat so that passengers could always discern the appropriate time while they rode around seated upon richly upholstered Orient and Prima cloth. For 1972, styling was changed a bit up front and at the rear to ensure the car maintained a fresh look with the dominant dual-port egg crate grille. But the real news for 1972 model year came with what Oldsmobile put together to celebrate its 75th anniversary. Division General Manager John Belts, who was just a few short years away from passing away due to cancer, asked Oldsmobile Interior Design Chief Blaine Jenkins what he could do to jazz up the 98's interior in celebration of this key milestone. Belts informed Jenkins that his budget was $100 per car. The result was the first loose cushion design ever put in a domestic vehicle, available either in black or covert gold. According to the 1972-98 Regency brochure, this car was designed to be a very limited edition luxury car with the Tiffany touch. A spectacular interior upholstered in limousine velours, a specially styled timepiece, a custom metallic paint in exclusive Tiffany gold, and a registered gift from Tiffany's of New York were all part of this 98 Regency package. Only 5,000 were to be made, lending an air of exclusivity to this new Olds. In addition to these items, owners of these special 98 Regencies got a unique set of keys, as well as a sterling silver key ring, such that if keys were ever lost, they could simply be dropped in the mailbox and Tiffany's would return them to their rightful owner. But the star of the car was its exclusive loose cushion interior that ate up so much room inside the cavernous 98's cabin that the overall driver's compartment appeared well-stuffed with yard after yard of velour trim. The inspiration for the design came when GM's executive in charge of interiors for all cars posed the question to Olds' interior designers regarding what if they made the Regency interior resemble a piece of furniture where loose cushions provided comfortable support. The final design adhered to that inspiration and added some interesting touches like zippered pouches on the seat backs to provide rear seat passengers storage and a clock that was allegedly designed by Tiffany but was really done by the old studio team and a royalty was simply remitted to Tiffany's. Overall, the 1972 Olds 98 Regency would prove so successful that the Regency would become a new full production model for 1973 with a few modifications added in for good measure. Aside from revised exterior styling treatments, in part due to new bumper regulations, a newly designed Tiffany clock would grace the instrument panel. Customers could also opt for the interior Onata cloth being tinted with more than two hues as it was in 1972. Beige, green, cranberry, red, or Wedgwood blue were all available interior colors for 1973. After another successful year in 1973, it was clear that customers loved the Regency interior and a similar loose cushion button tufted design would continue to be seen in Olds interiors even after the cars were significantly downsized in 1977 and again in 1985 when the transition to front wheel drive for the Olds 98 began. Overall, the Regency was a highly successful idea for Moles that amounted to little more than fancy seats and upper door trim panels, but it clearly worked. In fact, it worked so well that Cadillac allegedly made a push with GM to install Oles' Regency interior, relatively unaltered, in its base Calais models. This would have been a strange choice for Cadillac as the Calais interior would have then appeared more rich than the interiors that were used in the DeVille. It wouldn't take long, however, for Cadillac to copy the idea of an overstuffed interior for its cars, including the Fleetwood Talisman, which launched in 1974, and the DeVille D'Elegance, which launched in 1976. 
the latter of which significantly emulated the Regency's loose cushion interior. Of course, GM wasn't the only one to give the loose cushion look a go, as Imperial would introduce a similar look for 1972 as well. However, as you can see here in a photo of the 72 Imperial interior, the loose box cushion on the driver's side seat back only goes partway up the seat. It wouldn't be until 1974 that Imperial would have a full loose cushion seating design similar to the Regency, and Chrysler would in fact outdo the Oles in the loose cushion look by having a similar design on the seat bottom as well as the seat back. Let's now listen to an interview with Blaine Jenkins, then Oldsmobile chief designer, about how the 98 Regency's interior came about and how he worked with his team to create this unique package. Blaine unfortunately passed away in 2014, but thankfully this interview was captured where he spoke about the 1972 Regency's interior and how it came about. The 98 Regency, the highest trim level was the LS, and that was the, the car. But they wanted to do something special. I mean, John Belts was down the general manager, and he had again one of his call you in the office just before he leaves and then spring this on you. He said, uh, <laughs> but they'd all come down, drive down, and then they'd drive back to Lansing. They'd right. come down, spend the afternoon or whatever they wanted to see, and however long it took. But he called, he said, I, I want to do a car for the 75th anniversary of Oldsmobile, and I want it to, what would you do if I'd give you $100 more on the interior on the LS than what you have? In your, just $100 in your budget? Yeah. Per car? And I said, oh, God, I, there's nothing you couldn't do for that. You know? And so then we started working on, we, he said, go. Let's get it done. So we started on that, and I had a I had a boss by the name of Don Swars that was head of all interiors. He had been my boss in Chevrolet, and was one of, also one of my mentors and someone I really respected. And he was with he was came in with us one night, and we were all sitting around trying to think what to do. And he just said, we "We're just talking." He said, "What if you put?" What if you made it like a, a, a couch where the pillows are just uh, sitting on there and you could, not that you can take them off, but they just sort of look like that. Hmm. And all of a sudden, the whole thing turned and we started sketching in that direction. And then the Regency came from that. And Fisher Body fought it all the way. They couldn't do it. We weren't going to do it. Couldn't do it. Or was it because they didn't think they could do it on an assembly line, or they just couldn't, they didn't want to deal with the complexity? They didn't know how to, uh, <laughs> how's this lady going to, her hands are going to break, she's going <laughs> to twist the machine, and the needles are going to go through her hands, and she can't do that. <laughs> and I'd, I'd, I'd just work with them. I'd go over there, and I'd say, can you can you turn it then this way to sew along the backside to get the facings both coming down, they don't have to go down very deep. They only go down that deep. That's enough. Until finally we got it, and the first one that we got out, it was like whew, giving birth to an elephant. Was that unusual for a designer to go down and yeah. talk to the I did. Them? I did a lot. And they liked Joyce Sam. Yeah. yeah. I did a lot of that. So the Regency also has that, that 75th anniversary, has a special paint color, um, it has a black interior. It's registered with the Tiffany's. If you lost your keys, you could drop them in a mailbox, and Tiffany's would get them back. To that you. was all. Pulp. I know. <laughs> it was also just a selling point, right? And the Tiffany clock. They didn't do the Tiffany clock. You did the Tiffany yeah. clock, and the face, and just put their name on. And the paint color was we also unique too. Gave them a few bucks <laughs> for the name. I've read car reviews and you know Motor Trend and all these things, and people just talking about that car. And a lot of the comments were, you know, plusher than a Cadillac. You know, why would you buy your wife a Calais, you know, when you could get a Regency for the same price that just... And that had to have, that had to have stepped on Cadillac's We toes. just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> we just loved it. They actually went down to the 14th floor and wanted to take the Regency trim intact and put it in the Calais. Really? Which would have made the Calais more plush than, than a DeVille. Right. Crazy. 
And you fought him as you uh, well, I didn't have to. Yeah. The 14th floor said, <laughs> no way. Thanks for watching this video on the 1972 Olds 98 Regency. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to see a 70s era Olds 98 Regency in the flesh, be sure to check out the video below where Mark and I explore his 1976 Oldsmobile 98 Regency in addition to my 75 Olds 88 Royale. Thanks again for watching.